When we caught wind of the first coronavirus case in the Philippines, no one expected things would turn out quite like this. Despite other countries already suffering from the repercussions of the virus, it just didn't seem real enough. After all, we were consumed by the everyday. The government didn't seem to believe it either. This was in the beginning of 2020. Fast forward to present day, Filipinos are now forced to find ways to make ends meet. Among them, countless creatives whose projects have been cancelled, paper on hold, livelihood uncertain. Despite the disquiet, resilience prevails. A number of Filipino artists, filmmakers, and musicians have come together to cut through the fear, give back, and uplift the industry. One of the most prominent, creative-fueled causes in the time of the quarantine is Lockdown Cinema Club, an initiative by three filmmakers. The idea started off simple. Watch a short film from the roster, then donate what you can. Lockdown Cinema Club started like a short program for online catalog of different short films. When it was the first few days of community quarantine, I had this idea of helping the film workers. Everybody is trying to help each other during that time. So parang naisip ko, what about if we concentrated with the film workers? So my first thought was, how were our crew members doing? We decided to focus on the below-the-line workers. So yan yung mga utility, the crew, the grips. We have our art department, set carpenters, the people who make sure that our set is organized. We were really targeting the people who we knew weren't able to save money because of their pay grade. And then just over a month, they went over and beyond their target of feeding a thousand film workers. Since then, the folks behind Lockdown Cinema Club have gone on to feed over 1,500 of their workers on set. The original view of Lockdown Cinema was that we would be able to raise enough money for enough people just with the short film initiative. But since the quarantine extended and as the donations started to slow, we had to think of new ways kasi to bring in donations. The Lockdown Cinema Club like script reading it was an idea that we mentioned ni Carl to us. He pitched it that maybe we could do like a script reading for these films that marks the Philippine industry. The mechanics of the event where in that thing called Tadhana, we invited the main characters, which is Angelica Panganiban and J.M. Guzman, to read some scenes from the film. And then Tonep, there's a script on the screen as well where people can read it and she will narrate the scene descriptions. Sequence 26, Interior Bus. And then the exciting part is the Himala. We're tying up with ABS-CBN Film Restoration, partnered with Fiola Pascual, Jody Santa Maria, John Lloyd Cruz, while they create the script or do the scene with their own take while they're being directed by Lav Diaz and Joyce Bernal. So that's a different take of the film. Because we know the film, naman, it's very memorable. But this one, what we did is we wanted to know how in this kind of setup, and at the same time, culturally, kung ano yung nangyayari sa atin, very pasok sa nangyayari sa situation at sa pandemic, yung Himala, eh, di ba? I'm in Lockdown Cinema representing this guild of cinematographers called LPS. We decided to hold Instagram Q&As so between two cinematographers in the field, we also tapped uh, Matthew Libatique. He's the DOP of Mother of Black Swan. For 24 Hour Cinema, the concept of it is we chose to feature films. So for 24 hours, the donors or the audiences can rent the film via Vimeo On Demand. We ended it with a 24 hour cinema dialogues. With industry-wide support, celebrity involvement, and donations streaming in, Lockdown Cinema Club turned out to become far more than the short film catalog that Carl first imagined it to be. But just like any good film, this story too had its own setbacks. I think the biggest struggle of being a filmmaker is first mounting your film itself. After that, the biggest enemy is like really piracy. And just recently, yun nga, in 24 Hour Cinema, Patay na si Jesus was pirated and it got leaked in YouTube. Sa amin naman, I mean, aside from the piracy issue, I think one of the bigger problems really was when the number of people asking for help started to rise. Doon din nabuo yung ibang initiatives that we're currently talking about kasi parang none of us didn't have the heart to tell people na 
that's it. I mean, parang we're, we're done. We can't help you now. Sana, if we can pull this off, we can help more film workers in terms of a more sustainable way. One of the biggest problems in the industry as a freelancer is health concerns, eh, diba? So, uh, we're thinking about what we can do with the film workers because some of them can't afford premium health insurance or even they don't even have a fill health for that matter. Everything is up in the air. But that's what we hope for talaga is to create a more sustainable programs for the film workers. We adjust then to how things go. But parang I think uh, at least the three of us here in, in the room are pretty set to keep the lockdown entity going in in whatever form parang the, the industry needs it to be during and after the quarantine. Another group of creatives keeping busy during the lockdown are the folks behind Offshoot Online Gallery, a collaboration between educational photography platform Offshoot and video production company and photo gallery Tarzir Pictures. So Offshoot Online Gallery actually started through my Instagram stories. So I kind of was just thinking about how scary the times were. I posted on my stories and just kind of got a few friends to kind of get interested in the project also. And so a few people reached out to me and said they were also interested in making work. And we kind of came up with the concept of bringing kind of like a multi multimedia project uh, instead yeah. of like a photography project. You know, when I saw Cruz post, I was really interested to help out in any way that we could. And then she said it was, you know, really, at the end of the day, kind of a form of solidarity where the community can get together despite the distance, kind of utilizing the technology that we have, making the best out of the circumstances that we have. So the process basically is people sign up um, through like a Google form. And then uh, we also made a Facebook group where we put all of the participants in. And then we just kind of wanted everyone to find their own partners, like bahala na sila. Just also to encourage people to get to know other artists. One requirement that we had was they need to make a pledge out of any sales that they make to donate to any organization that supports frontliners and patients of the pandemic. This is mainly because we wanted more than just making work as creatives. We acknowledge that making any non-essential work is a privilege, especially at this time. I think a lot of the submissions, it's about like a 50-50 thing of like escapism, sort of making their own worlds or completely different from what we're experiencing now. Another kind of thing that we're seeing the submissions is a documentation of the quarantine. Personally, I really enjoyed the escapism videos. I guess being cooped up inside right now is, you know, it causes your mind to kind of run wild and it was really interesting seeing what people were coming up, just like being stuck at home. Obviously, for most of the, the submissions, they can't make new work. Like, you can't go outside, you can't take new pictures. I, I was looking through the submissions and, and one of them had photos of like crowded streets and like busy streets. And these are photos that maybe would have had a different meaning before. But I guess now, under the circumstances, like seeing packed streets, seeing many people close together is like kind of terrifying, you know? Things are picking up new meaning. The industry is changing. With each submission released by Offshoot Online Gallery, it becomes clear that the reality we once had may not be the same when the virus dies down. Despite the uneasiness of these times, Crew, Neil, Tell, and Gio find unwavering importance in continuously pursuing art. I think art will always act as some sort of documentation of the times. Another way is that if you're an artist and it's really what you do, sometimes it's a, it's a way to cope with difficult times. It's a way for you to let out your anxieties, your concerns, you know, even at some point to take a stand if you want to. I also think it's important to keep practicing your craft because it kind of forces you to think about what's important. Like for me as an editor, it's also important to think about like which stories are more important to tell right now. And if we look at what everyone's doing during this lockdown, well, the people who are privileged enough to stay at home, they're like watching movies, playing video games, reading books. It, everything is interspersed with, with art and I think people need it more than they realize. Across the globe is another Filipino creative eager to do her part in combating the virus with her craft. Clarice Perrido is a designer and illustrator based in New York City, which, like the Philippines, is experiencing its fair share of pandemic trouble. Marita and I, we've been friends, and she, she's been like my boss for an internship. 
way before when I was in Manila. And I saw her do this Art for Med PH project and I said like, I feel like I should be doing something if I have like a platform. I could try and reach out to people and ask for their participation in this project. What I did was I put out a form on my website and the details were there about what they could avail. And then once they fill it out, um, definitely they want to specify what one word prompt they wanted for the portraits. So I specifically wanted the one word prompt because it's a way to look into a person's personality, how they think and everything. And then I base the artwork that I do on that one word. So it's kind of like a collaboration, even though it's like remotely done. Proceeds from Clarissa's Art for Med PH commissions are then coursed through Woman Create, who handles the forwarding of donations to the Kaya Natin movement. Clarice and Woman Create have also partnered up with Ankas to deliver the nations in kind. Despite the effort to do her part even remotely, as a Filipina based abroad, Clarice admits that the fear doesn't die with the distance. Over in New York, she faces her own version of lockdown reality while worrying about her home half a world away. Generally, like if you just look outside my window right now, it's it's really quiet. It's really a stark contrast from what New York is. And if you go to Central Park, there's actually like tents that are used for people who are treating COVID-19 patients, I believe. I would have to actively seek for information definitely about the lockdown and about what's happening in the Philippines. A lot of us are feel helpless during this time. It's like we feel entirely removed from the system and it's like it's scary that you have that idea that how society runs may collapse you know i feel helpless but not hopeless definitely hopeful but what is it that we really hope for post lockdown i guess yung biggest lesson ako personally yung biggest lesson ko is bodsa i need to save more right now it's ano eh, you have to think about there's something wrong with the system there's something wrong with us not having our own guilt within the community of course there's a governing body for different sectors but for artists but for film workers who are freelance, who's gonna take care of us? Right? We're so busy before the pandemic, we're so busy enriching our art forms that we forgot na we need help from the government to help us also enrich our personal lives. To also add to that, I think you know there are a lot of very talented people in the Philippines and not getting support from the government on like a national level is kind of just like throwing that away all that talent and there's so much potential to not just to show the world but also to earn to make money because we all gotta eat i just think it would be a lot of talent wasted then in these situations i think what tends to be the case is that these freelancers are having to kind of fend for themselves moving forward i hope that there's a system of support for that in place in case you know hopefully this doesn't happen again after i expect like a stronger closer industry na i'm hoping will be braver to, to speak out won't hesitate to to form their own initiatives if it's for the betterment of everyone else parang ganun.